My name is Liam Andersen. I'm a mixed media artist from Denmark, based in Athens, Greece. My art is mainly focused on political struggles, um, human relationships and nature. There is a extremely interesting uh, political movement in Athens that I have always also been very drawn by and I came here the first time in 2017 and fell in love with the place and I was here for two months and then I left and uh, started traveling for nine months but felt like very um, can you say like very like I wanted something more stable in a way and Athens was the thing that I remembered of a place that felt mostly like home and also mostly the place that I wanted to go back to. So when I for a really long time have been extremely like restless, I was always thinking to go back to Athens. There is like input all the time and it's always inspiring. And this is like, it is an epicenter both for a political struggle, but also for, for other artists and for other creatives. We cannot like doubt that, and in that sense, that is hyperly like influenced my way of like always wanting to work. And this place is super free. Like everything that you can do here, like having a studio all of a sudden, like and having a place to work, and there will always be people to connect with. It made it way more easy. It doesn't feel like a competition in this way. I feel like there are small hops in Athens where you actually have reached this idea of creating art outside of this market and this capitalizing idea of how to create art we actually can just make it together and enjoy that each other are moving forward. I always had like this like strong feeling that the art world was something where you could actually live outside of this market. And I think in my idea of having a free life where I could be a bit my own boss and like live out my creativity in this sense was really drawing to me. But the more I started to engage with the art world, the more I also saw that that's something you make up in your own world of how to be an artist. Like I don't think that the art world is disconnected from the neoliberalist market at all. I think that there's a responsibility as artists to try to engage outside of this. Um, there's so much to criticize on the, on the stereotypical art world. And I think you can come around it and I think you can use art in a very free and beautiful way. But for myself, I am forced to often use platforms and promote my work in a way that I wouldn't personally decide to do if we were not forced to do it. But yeah, so I think there's a lot of criticize. Yeah, and there's the whole question of gender and how we interact in the art world. In um, Until I Was Born, I reflected uh, both on my own past to see my present and my behavior in the present society. I feel like one thing that I'm extremely engaged with when I do the art is how, like for instance, how I am as a person, like what was I made of in this sense. And I think looking back upon my parents' love story, for instance, gave me like an opportunity to have an understanding of my own relationships with like people and with humans in general. So that was very personal for me, of course. That was like the first time where I could really like engage in my own present in that sense. And then for me to do artwork or like dig into our history in this sense, especially being the youngest one who maybe remember the least, was a very interesting way of being able to speak with your family about past situations of like, not even call it traumas, just past like understanding of what actually happened and it made like this idea of development way more clear in my head. Politically I also think that there was something really strong about how they were um, being a part of their own history and they always tried to escape like the neoliberalist market and were forced to the reality that they could not really f escape it and in that sense when they got children and when they settled down they quite quickly realized that actually they were sucked into exactly the same market of capitalism in general.
hundred percent. I feel like we were always brought up in a specific way of having at least a criticism of the um, capital and having a criticism of the way that you have to um, engage in the society. So I felt I was naturally more drawn to be free, freely thinking outside of this market than trying to force myself into this box. Um, but it's definitely, it's hard to say because I chose it and they chose it for me, not as much as I was forced to do it. I think I still was raised in a very privileged side of society. I had a little bit of a dream before becoming a painter to be a documentarist. And that was always my like, that was what I was like thriving for for so long. But I never got like the, um, never got like the tools to it. I never found out technically I couldn't do it at all. So I started painting stories instead. Like I think I was in different political situations in while traveling where I wanted to reproduce it in a way. And I wanted to tell these stories, but I always felt extremely disconnected to the situation. If I was holding a camera, I always felt more like I was not there physically, but I was there to take something from the situation. So I started painting it instead when I had my own time, also of a way to like reflect on the, the stress that you maybe put in in various <laughs> political situations. So yeah, it started like this. It depends a lot. Now I worked the whole project, for instance, with my parents are based on photographs that they took when they were young and when they were traveling for all this time. So in that sense, like I always were like forcing myself to use it. I have not yet tried to use a, um, uh, making a series that was like myself photographing it and then afterwards painting it. In these situations, it was just more be freely handed, like, but really badly wanted to find a way of documenting the situation. Since a while I have been working on a project called uh, Strugglers, which focuses on revolutionary strugglers throughout history, mainly focusing on strugglers who are non-cis male. Um, they are based on uh, photographies. The movement that I knew I wanted to cover before making the project was the Zapatista movement. Um, they grabbed the world's attention in 1994 when they warned that NAFTA would create a gap between the rich and the poor. They have a stronghold in Chiapas in Mexico. Um, the reason why I feel very um, inspired and um, drawn to this movement is because of their relationship to land and spirituality and nature. Another photo that I also think stands out a lot is a photo taken by Jorge Oson um, in the late 90s. He was covering the um, genocide that happened in Guatemala, where Mayan men, women and children were condemned as uh, communist guerrillas and massacred. Um, again, I was deeply um, inspired by how the Mayan people in Guatemala had a connection to land and a connection to spirituality in this sense and how capitalism have um, again created a genocide. I saw a like a long like list of um, these portraits of like photographs of um, what seems to be women who are uh, fighting um, the struggle and I kind of fell in love with this idea of these pictures. And I, can't, I wanted to document them. I was very inspired by revolutionaries in general, but I felt like we have now just reproduced this idea of male strugglers um, in this like very macho, toxic way that I feel is was so many times shown. And in a way, I wanted to understand this because that was also what drew me to many political situations that I felt that this was extremely strong and I wanted to have an understanding of this and I have romanticized this toxic masculinity that can be in struggling, but never really realized how many 
other genders and species were behind exactly the same struggles. So for me, it was just being extremely drawn to it. And then it started like trying to have an understanding of history in the past and these women like are the backbone of this schooling that I am also going through. Oppression in general, and I think oppression in general can, as we say, like we are, we are moving, hopefully like it's small stones that is being built and the first stones were fighting something completely different than you fight now, but of course there is a connecting a piece of it and there's a reason why we, I can live a life and other people can live a life and the quality that they do as a result of the people fighting before them. I think a huge amount of history, I think a huge amount of like theories that I have never connected that I think I have learned from uh, people like non cis males in the, in the in our communities have often been speaking out loud about these things a lot and I think I have I have not connected it so much, but I can see everybody is almost like interconnectively fighting for the same fights no matter what time it is in. I'm also really trying to say that this is my way of like be like honoring these people and being in solidarity. That's not my way of showing that I am feeling the same struggle in my everyday life. I feel that's important uh, to say. maybe try to get more stable with the artwork it would be very lovely. I would very, I would, I think every artist would love that, to be stably having a form of income in that sense where you know every month that it comes from, but I have to give it time, I think. So it excites me to start projects that I can work on for a long time, start working in a studio again, when everything gets open again and I actually have the opportunity to do everything that I was on my way to do that got quite shut off quickly with with the corona like yeah it excites me to get started again on a normal pace yes and I think as a human I'm also even though I love that it's chaotic I love it until a point I think I will end up looking a upon myself maybe when I'm a bit older and I would just have asked myself to just calm down. I am sure no matter what it's gonna go on to, it's gonna be fine.